Well, when I was born, I was born on a, on a border where from my window I could see uh, the border uh, not to cross because on the other side uh, there were Germans. <laughs> Uh, but they had the same name as we had. Yes. But they spoke the same language. Yes. And I said, well, how crazy can we be to have this border? This border, they should disappear. And you know, it has disappeared. It has disappeared. And all the, all the borders in, uh, in Europe have disappeared. Yes. Which yes. is something really miraculous. Uh, but nobody, nobody complained. And uh, I had my, my whole philosophy was from when I was a child. I said, this, this planet is so beautiful, nature is so beautiful, that there should not be any wars. How can there be any wars? And there was an elderly man called Robert Schumann, who became the minister of uh, uh, many things in France, and he created a united Europe. The With your border, help. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when I met him once, I asked him, I said, what made you do what you did? Namely, you got rid of 25 borders in Europe. And you know what he told me? He had the same story as mine. He said, I was born at a place where Luxembourg, Germany and France got together. Mm -hmm. And I was given one Christmas a new bicycle. And wherever I went with my bicycle, I was stopped because they had a border. <laughs> and I swore that time that if in my life I will have the opportunity of suppressing these borders, I will do it. <laughs> and he said, that's exactly what I did. I have suppressed the borders in Europe. And Europe is much happier as a result of that. Oh, yes. But it was his, it is like my own reason was, life is so beautiful. I always said as a kid, life is divine. I looked at the, at the sky. I went to meetings to hear about uh, the beautiful life we, we should have on this planet. And uh, I wished, I prayed that all my life I would be able to do something for a very happy, peaceful world. And you know, it, uh, it became a reality. And I entered did. the UN coming from a very poor little village. <laughs> I was in the UN. I became an assistant secretary general in the UN. I was able to do so many things which are almost inconceivable. And now I'm retired. I'm retired already almost 20 years. And every day I do something. During the night, I woke up at four o'clock and I wrote a letter to the Secretary General of the UN. Here is something which you should do. <laughs> and I do it with, with nations too. So that I have now written already, my wife, my, when I married uh, Barbara, she said, you know, you have so many good ideas, you should write them down. And I never wrote them down. And since I did this, I have now written more than 7,000 ideas. And if I want to have a, a, a letter to a president which deals with a particular subject, the, the computer gives me pages and pages, and I send them the pages. So I select some from, from there, and I will never give up. During the last night, for example, I woke up at one point and I wrote a letter to the Secretary General, where the Secretary General now has announced that there will be a meeting about uh, the, the development of uh, happiness and uh, peace um, in, in all the countries of the world. And I wrote to him and I said, look, I have convened a world conference on happiness and peace already in 1971. And you know what? He on didn't the, remember. <laughs> you know what? On the first day of that meeting, you should begin it by playing and on your harmonica. Oh, sure. <laughs> Ode to Joy by Beethoven, right? The Ode to Joy, yes. <laughs> because mo most of the time, 
uh, people who, uh, who heard me speak years ago, they said, oh, Mr. Miller, we heard you speak. It was wonderful. We had this conference on top of the mountain uh, in South America, and it was so intelligent, so great. And I said, do you remember something? One particular item? No. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. And then at one point, the lady jumped up. I know. What do you know? I know your harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> and since that time, I have my harmonica in my pocket. And whenever people uh, get involved in something and it has no result, uh, at the end of it, I said, you know, we didn't do, and we didn't do much in, in our conference, but let me play the harmonica and hope that we will have a beautiful, better uh, land. You know what? <laughs> Harmonica comes from the word harmony, doesn't it? Exactly. Not? I suppose you know this, but in Japanese, the word for harmony is wa. And this word wa is a nominative mark. They put an objective mark and a nominative mark in their wo is an object and wa is a subject. But every subject in Japan, when it is spoken or written, is marked by the word meaning harmony. Is that a good yeah, start? Sure. Of course, <laughs> of course. So there's your harmonica. There's <laughs> another thing about borders in Japanese. The word border in Japanese is fu chi, which is actually a Chinese word. It means the limit of the chi. <laughs> And yeah. a boundary is something that is seen as separating two things that it also unites. <laughs> and so taking the right, right hand of a border and changing it to a bond of union instead of a separation is predicted by the Tao. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's working, you know, there's more and more a closer cooperation yeah. between the, the countries. Of course, it's difficult because they were all born at the time when the animals were born, and they went around and uh, settled down, so they had to create a language, mm -hmm. they had to create uh, a god or a religion, and they were living. The 2000, 2000 schemes like this lived in isolation or in wars. They make wars against the next one if the next one was a little bit too dangerous. And now suddenly they are all brought together and to get these languages and these religions to, together is not easy at all. Religion is the you biggest see. problem. Yeah.